Hi guys, welcome back. So if you noticed my last video, you would have seen that I'm uh, fighting a really bad uh, Dino infection. And uh, what I'm gonna do is actually show you some of uh, the things that I've done to my tank. And as you're watching the video, I'm gonna tell you about some of the research that I've done over the past uh, month or so trying to figure out what's the best way to deal with Dinos. Uh, there is a lot of information out there. Some of it is not very accurate. Some of it's helpful, some of it's not. And I had to navigate through all of this uh, messy knowledge base. And I thought I could uh, perhaps summarize uh, some of the things that I've learned about Dinos and how to deal with them. Uh, so first off, what are Dinos? Uh, dinos are dinoflagellates. They're single-celled organisms. Uh, they have a flagellum. It's a whip-like tail that they use to uh, get around. Uh, that's important in identifying them. Uh, many species are what's called mixotrophic. So that means that they could generate energy, autotrophic, generate energy through photosynthesis. So they could make their own food, but they could also uh, eat other organisms for food, including uh, bacteria that we found in our tanks, cyanobacteria, and diatoms. Uh, some of them could produce toxins. Most species produce asexually by essentially budding, uh, but they often also have, uh, they're, they're able to produce dormant cysts that could persist in your, uh, uh, in your system for a while. So these cysts are, uh, can transform from uh, a dormant stage into uh, a free-swimming uh, adult again. Okay, how to identify dinos? Well, the best way uh, is you need a, uh, to get a microscope or find somebody that has a microscope and you need to look at around uh, uh, 500 to 1,000 magnification. Uh, they uh, essentially look like single-celled uh, organisms, uh, and if you get a fresh sample, you should be able them. Uh, you should be able to see them move. Uh, I've posted a couple of links to uh, good databases where you could uh, look at pictures of uh, dinoflagellates. Uh, it's important to get a positive identification because they're easily confused with uh, dinos and uh, sorry, dinos are easily confused with cyanobacteria and diatoms. Okay, how did you get dinos in your tank? So it's a, a complicated question because uh, remember uh, you, you could you could get uh, really bad dino plumes and it's so obvious to tell them, but also you could have these dormant cells that uh, stay in your system without uh, causing any visible signs. So uh, a few people think that uh, most people actually have uh, dinos in their systems and, and uh, uh, local fish stores probably have dinos in their systems as well. Uh, it's just that they're kept in check by other organisms and they never and in most circumstances they never bloom and, and cause problems. So what we think causes a plume is that there is some systems where, uh, uh, for, for lack of a better word, just don't have as much biodiversity and the dinos are not kept in check. So if you look at some of the online forums, there are some commonalities to tanks that have dino outbreaks. Uh, so outbreaks occurs, occur more frequently in tanks that were established with dry rock, have very ultra-low nutrient systems, uh, employ forms of carbon dosing, or use uh, GFO to reduce uh, uh, phosphates. So uh, uh, tanks that have low nutrients, uh, if you know, should theoretically sustain less biodiversity because there's just less food for microorganisms. And these conditions uh, make a tank susceptible to Dina outbreaks. Uh, I'm not saying that if you run an ultra low nutrient system, you will uh, always get Dinos or, or you can't get Dinos in a high nutrient system. But often uh, low nutrients, uh, carbon dosing and, and dry rock lead to low biodiversity and, and makes a tank susceptible to Dina outbreaks. Okay, how to treat Dinos. Uh, so there isn't a, a, a good like one size fits all scientifically proven solution that will kill dinos. There, there's multiple options out there and, and, and you have to kind of decide which way you wanna go. Uh, so the first important thing is that you have to know your enemy, you have to make sure that you're dealing with dinos and uh, get a scope and try to identify the genus of dinos that you're working with uh, uh, because uh, depending on what you have, some treatments may work and some others may not. Another thing that you should decide is, is uh, uh, once you confirm that you have dinos, uh, try to assess the situation, like how urgent is the problem? 
Are you dealing with like a, a toxic outbreak of dinos where your livestock and, and your fish and corals are suffering uh, and you have to do something quick to save your tank? Uh, or is this a cosmetic problem? You're seeing dinos in the sand bed and some of the rocks, but your fish are mostly, mostly healthy and, and it doesn't seem to be a problem for your corals yet. All right, so uh, there is a whole bunch of chemical treatments that people have tried on dinos with varying success. Uh, so there's a product called Dino X. Uh, people have reported some success with hydrogen peroxide and Metroplex. Uh, but, you know, these are harsh chemicals. And if you look at the forms for every kind of success story, there is a story of I use this stuff and, and it killed some of my corals or, or uh, it caused my SPS to... Uh, uh, to uh, die through uh, rapid tissue necrosis. So these chemicals uh, uh, do carry some risk and, and, and you probably should only use harsh chemicals as a last resort. Uh, so you know if, if your corals are dying and your fish are dying and you just need to add, do something uh, like quickly, then you might want to consider some of these treatments. But I'll tell you about other treatments that uh, are viable from my experience, uh, probably even better. All right, uh, one bit of kit that seems helpful for most Dino outbreaks is a UV sterilizer. Uh, so a UV sterilizer works by killing or sterilizing organisms that are suspended in the water column. Uh, they're effective in controlling Dinos uh, that go at the water at night. So a, a lot of Dinos would stay in the sand bed in the, in the daytime and then uh, go into the water column at night. And for these Dinos, getting a UV, uh, an appropriately sized UV could be very effective. Uh, you want to make sure that your UV is powered for your system and that the water flow through the UV is uh, is slow enough. So most UV sterilizers will have a range of flow rates. On one end, there is a fast flow rates that will get rid of most bacteria, but you know bacteria are a lot smaller than dinos. On the other end of the range, uh, uh, they're more suitable for killing like large cell things like ick and and dinos, for example. So you want to go with the slowest rate that's recommended for your UV sterilizer. And the general rule of thumb is you want about two watts per gallon for your tank. Okay, some people report uh, that using a di diatom filter. So that's a very, very fine filter that you could cycle your tank water through and that would catch a lot of the particles. So typically the uh, uh, dinos are about uh, uh, 20 to 10 microns. So any filter that is smaller than that should filter, uh, uh, remove uh, a good proportion of the dinos from your tank. But it's, you know, it's a time consuming process because uh, the smaller the filter, the longer it takes for water to pass through it. Uh, one thing that doesn't uh, necessarily kill dinos, but it helps mask some of their toxins is running carbon. So uh, try to run carbon uh, and replace it often when you have a dino outbreak because we know that dinos release toxins and we want the carbon to remove as much of the toxins from the water column. Okay, if you have dinos that seem to be restricted to the sand bed, uh, some people, including myself, have had success with reducing dino outbreaks by removing most or all of their sand bed. Uh, so you could do this gradually uh, uh, with uh, with a hose or, or you could just scoop it out and, and often that, that is reported to help uh, uh, from my research. Okay, uh, blackouts, uh, the general consensus is that blackouts are not very effective against dinos because remember dinos uh, are not, uh, do not solely rely on uh, light for photosynthesis. They could consume other organisms to generate energy. So often people try a blackout and the sand clears up, the dino outbreak clears up, but as soon as the light come, uh, come back on, then you see more uh, dinos uh, pop up again. So uh, uh, dinos uh, are not gonna be affected uh, by a blackout. The numbers will get reduced, but then they're gonna come back. Uh, but you can shorten your photo period a little bit, uh, and that is very helpful if you're in combination with UV. So UV targets dinos that are suspended in the water column. If you cut your photo period, then you're giving more period of the day where there is no light for the dinos to go in the water column and, uh, and uh, where they could get zapped by the UV radiation. Okay, finally, uh, one, in my opinion, one of the best solutions that I found out there uh, was uh, trying to uh, essentially deal with dinos by balancing your nutrients in a way 
that will uh, uh, make competitors and predators of Dinos thrive. So I can't take credit for this. Uh, uh, there is a, a really awesome form on Reef to Reef. If you're battling Dinos, I suggest you go hit that form. It's called Dino Flagellates. Are you tired of fighting all together? And I, I've made a link to that uh, in this video here. So the, the key here is you wanna stop uh, uh, doing any forms of carbon do dosing and amino acid supplementation. Uh, you want to stop using GFO and you want to start increasing nutrients in your tank. Uh, you could do this by overfeeding, but it's better to do it in a controlled way by dosing nitrates and phosphates. And the targets here, the general targets is you want to get your nitrates above five parts per billion, uh, parts per million, and your phosphates uh, greater than 0.1 parts per uh, uh, million. So uh, uh, if you have undetectable nitrates and phosphates now, you should gradually dose potassium nitrate or phosphorus to increase the levels. You want to test your waters often. Uh, you, you, wanna, you, you don't want to like dump a lot of phosphorus into your tank, uh, causing a spike uh, that ends up killing your corals. Uh, you want to slowly build up the dose until you start getting detectable levels and then bring the dose up uh, gradually till, till you meet the targets. Uh, of uh, 0.1 parts per, billion, uh, per million for phosphates and above five for, uh, for nitrates. Uh, it might take a bit of dosing for, in my case, it took about a, a week or two weeks of dosing before I could actually see detectable phosphates. But then after I got through that initial hump, I, I was able to maintain uh, uh, 0 0.2, uh, uh, above 0.1 parts per million of phosphates, uh, uh, which is kind of impressive because I've never had any uh, detectable nitrates and uh, phosphates in my tank before. Uh, so be prepared to go through an ugly phase when you start dosing nutrients. Uh, you will see lots of green hair algae, some people see cyano, but that's actually a good thing that that means that you're, you are starting to kind of reintroduce biodiversity to your tank and, and over time uh, uh, these uh, algae, uh, the algae and the bacteria that are growing in your tank will uh, ideally outcompete the dinos so that that this last uh, this last uh, uh, measure is what I apply to my tank so I noticed uh, uh, I noticed my dino outbreak in uh, in early October and once I confirmed it was dinos I, I did a couple of things the first thing that I did was I added a UV and then I did a series of, of uh, like every day I would do a 15 liter water change and while I was changing out the 15 liters, I would actually siphon a portion of my sand bed and, and remove it out of the tank. And at the same time, I, I had uh, undetectable phosphates, so I started dosing Seachem uh, uh, Flourish uh, Phosphorus. And it took about, I think, two weeks of dosing uh, this before I actually saw detectable levels. And, you know, in the middle of this, uh, around uh, like last, uh, uh, last week of October, the tank looked really awful. I had dinos everywhere. Uh, there was grain, grain here, uh, grain here, algae uh, growing up on rocks. The, the tank just looked really ugly. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I I did consider throwing in the towel and just ripping the tank apart and 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 starting from fresh. Uh, but I'm glad I didn't because uh, you know the tank looked ugly for a week, but then it started getting better. And better and better and better and better and now I look at my tank and and I don't see any signs of dinos there's you know tiny little patches of dinos on the sand uh, surprisingly the the green hair algae which was really intensified around uh, early November is now mostly gone so I am running a tank that's got five parts per uh, million of nitrates and 0.2 parts per million phosphates phosphates but it looks pristine. I don't see any uh, big algae problems. I don't see any dino problems. And the SPS corals have actually looked great. So thanks so much to uh, all the people on the Reef to Reef forum. Uh, they've uh, given me a lifeline and, and now uh, my tank is looking as good as ever. All right. Thank you so much and see you next month.